Hello, Nansen Explorers. In this video, I'm going to do a speed run. I'm going to show you how you can leverage Nansen end to end in the investment life cycle. So Nansen really is useful at three different stages in the investment life cycle. The first is discovery. You discover something where you didn't really know what you were looking for. You just open one of our dashboards. And you discovered something. It could be a token, it could be a smart contract or a yield farming opportunity, but it's the discovery part. After you discovered something, you can do due diligence. You can dive into that specific opportunity and you can learn more about it. You can understand, is this worth my time? Is this worth putting money into? You know, is it a, has, does it have a high chance of a rug? Is it a scam? You know, who else is investing into this, etc. That's the due diligence part. And the third part is what we call defense. Maybe you invested in something. Now you want to set up alerting so that if something happens, you can get out in time, or perhaps you should reevaluate your investment. So discovery, due diligence, and defense. These are the three stages. And I'm going to show you in an example how to do this with Nansen. So I start at smart money. You can find this by going to smart money in the dashboards, or you can just go to pro.nonsen.ai slash smart money. This dashboard shows what the smart money is doing. So not all the 150 million plus addresses active on Ethereum, but the curated segment of smart money that we have tracking for in Nonsen. I'm going to go to token holdings because I want to understand, you know, these smart money addresses, like what tokens are they actually accumulating? And so you see a lot of stable coins at the top here, but I can also see like Fey, Tribe, actually Fey is a stable coin, Tribe, which is a governance uh, token for Fey. Um, and I see lots of different tokens, but I'm kind of looking for something maybe that is a bit more esoteric, you know, something that is not so common. And I see here a spell token, okay? That's something that I'm not very familiar with. So I'm going to drill down into this. I'm going to close my calendar here as well. Now I'm taken to token god mode. So I went from discovering something, in this case, spell. Um, and now I want to look at it more closely. So I see right away 2.67% of these, uh, the supply of this token is on exchanges. And it doesn't have a lot of history. It, in fact, 27th of May, that's like a bit more than a week ago, uh, is when I have history from. And I see that most of the liquidity is sitting on SushiSwap. But six, mil, 6 billion tokens are sitting on Uniswap. And so now I want to figure out what are some of the notable wallets that are holding this spell token. And I can see right away the balance changes. So I can see these are addresses that have been either you know sending out tokens or accumulating them. And so I see this... Uh, abracadabra money uh, entity that is actually the spell token itself. It holds 210 billion tokens, most of the tokens. But I also see the sushi swap pool. And I see even a smart money address here that has been receiving this token. And I can scroll down and I can look at top transactions. Here I see Wifey Whale, a smart money address, sending 1 billion tokens into the sushi swap pool. In fact, I could look at that transaction and I can say that, hey, this is actually them supplying 1 billion tokens together with 737 Ether as liquidity. So they're not dumping the tokens, they're providing liquidity. Um, and I can look at the top balances. So 93% of the total supply is in the token contract itself, but a big part of the token uh, supply is sitting in the SushiSwap pool contract. And now it gets more interesting because, of course, the pool has liquidity providers. So what if you wanted to figure out who is actually providing liquidity? You could then go to depositors. You drill down one step further. And now you can look at the top depositors into this contract. And so it has 6 billion tokens sitting on it right now but you can see who has been depositing tokens in net terms into it as well. Uh, if you're curious why it can be 7.3 billion, meaning a higher number here, 
than it is up here. It's of course, because people can withdraw on the other end, right? So someone can deposit tokens in, but then someone else is actually buying the tokens on the other side, right? That's why that number can be higher. But most of the tokens went in from this one address. And so that's interesting to me. Uh, I would like to understand like who is this address. So maybe I'll click down on this, sorry, not that link. I'll click over here on that link to the right. And I can now get this wallet profiler view for this specific address for this token. So now we're looking at this address. You can also see the address up here for the spell token. I can look at, you know, what other labels this address has. And I see a lot of these like yat like names. Uh, some of them are pretty cool, like diamond hands, ape.eth. And they're also a Gnosis safe creator. They're a heavy dex trader. They're a pool creator, uncommon NFT collector, open C user, MetaMask swap user, and they were even sandwiched attacked at some point. So that gives me a little bit of context on what this address is. I can also see that they received a lot of the tokens from the zero address, which indicates that they're probably the minter uh, of this uh, token initially. In fact, you can see the individual transaction here where they received from the zero address, you know, the minting transaction. In fact, I could look at that here and I see the minting that was the, uh, done of 14.7 billion tokens. So they're basically the minter of the spell token. So they're basically the deployer, the creator of it. And you can see what they've been doing with it. They provided liquidity to the SushiSwap pool here. Uh, in fact, I can click through on this as well. And you can see that they're supplying these spell tokens with 62 ether initially there. And so uh, that's pretty cool. I get to see, you know, what they have been doing with their spell tokens. I could also look at the same address, but in the generic wallet profiler view. So if I go to wallet profiler, paste in the address, it's gonna show me the activity of this uh, address over time. Again, you can look at their address labels here, but you can now also see their activity. Uh, they have been active since October, 2020, but much more active in April and May and June this year. Uh, you can see that they hold cream, tether, and some spell tokens. And you can even see that they have deployed the SushiSwap pool for spell and the Uniswap V3 pool for spell. Um, and you can also see that they uh, have created uh, a Gnosis safe proxy contract, which you could drill down to if you want it, and an OpenSea account. You can also look at their counterparties. So you can look at their ether. Where did they get the ether from? Looks like most of it from Uniswap, some from Bitfinex, some from unknown entities, also one inch Binance, MetaMask Swap, Cream, Zapper, SushiSwap, and some other entities. And they've been sending them to Uniswap one inch, like many of the same ones. Um, and you could even look at where they received Ether from, where they sent it to. And, you know, we're not going to go down this rabbit hole altogether, but I'm going to take it a step back and say, you know, how did we get here? We started at Smart Money. We had no, you know, ideas of what to look for, but we looked at the tokens that Smart Money addresses were basically accumulating. And so we found spell token. We looked at, we clicked on that and that took us to token God mode and where, where I could look at the top balance changes uh, and the top holders of these tokens. We could drill down into the SushiSwap pool and we found that the deployer of it, it we learned through this process is the top liquidity provider. Um, and we then were able to drill down and understand like what this token is. So. What can we do from here? Well, personally, I would probably want to know if this address, for example, withdraws liquidity or if it makes any large transactions with this token because they have so much power over, over this token, right? Like they're a big holder of it. So I would probably go to smart alerts from here and I would add a trigger for this address. So if I invested in spell, and by the way, this is none of this investment advice, hopefully that's clear. I would go to add a trigger, a smart alert trigger here. I would say, you know, large spell holder or liquidity provider, whatever you want. 
and I'd paste in their address here. And I would say, you know, show more tokens. I care about the spell token. So I'm going to add that. And then minimum USD value. Maybe I only care if they do anything that is uh, $1 million worth uh, of a transaction. Actually, I don't think I'm going to have that because I wouldn't want to know if they do anything at all with the token. Then I can select which channel I want to get. So Discord, Telegram, or Slack. I enter my Telegram ID here, and then I would save it. And that would give me real-time notifications whenever this large liquidity provider for spell makes any moves on the blockchain. So within seconds, I would get a notification in my Telegram. So that's how I would use Numson in this case. Discover a token, in this case, spell. I'm not saying you should invest in it. You have to make that decision yourself. I found spell. I did some due diligence on it. I discovered that, hey, there's this big liquidity provider that has a lot of power and could move the price. And then I created a smart alert trigger to put me in defense mode uh, so that I know if anything important happens on chain. Hopefully that was useful. This is just an example of how we can use Numson end to end to level up your on-chain analytics and your crypto trading. Hope that was useful. See you next time.